All right, boys and girls, welcome back to the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame Museum giveaway, where they are giving away a brand new 2024 C8 Z06 with the Z07 Performance Package plus an extra $25,000. And that is available to each and every one of the Brink of Speed watchers. When you click on one of these to buy tickets, this is what it's gonna look like. You're gonna see the Brink 20. You put in all of your information here, hit continue. It'll ask for your credit card information, and then you are entered to win this beautiful, brand new Z07 Z06. Plus, if you don't wanna take the car, there is a $100,000 cash option that you can take instead. So good luck, everyone. I cannot wait to see which one of you guys wins. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Brink of Speed. Tonight, I am at Corvette World because Robert and I have a couple of absolutely beautiful and special cars to show you. And we are gonna be comparing two of the best Corvettes of all time. The 2019 C7 ZR1 with the ZTK package and the 2024 C8 Z06 with the Z07 track package. Let's get going. How you doing folks? Once again, I am Robert and I forgot my name tag today. So now you know who I am. I am Robert. <laughs> All right. When you think of the best Corvettes in history, you got the quickest, you've got the fastest, top speed, you got the best quarter mile, the best handling, you know, you names that come to mind, historical, the L88, the ZL1, the C4, 4ZR1, the C6ZR1, the C7, the C06. But there's, when you look at every category, there are two Corvettes that dominate all the categories. And that is what we have sitting right in this room. So, of course, we all know the ZR1, C7. This has a 6.2 liter LT5 V8 with 755 horsepower. If you have the GM cold air intake, which this particular model does, it gets up to 772. It's got a 2.6 liter supercharged. So this is a blower motor, as it's referred to, all right? Comparing to the new 2023 or newer Z06, which this particular model is a 24 with the track package, you have a naturally aspirated dual overhead cam, 5.5 liter, V8 with 670 horsepower. So less horsepower, but it's doing it all without the help of any blower. It is the most powerful, naturally aspirated production V8 in the industry at the moment. So guys, I absolutely love the ZR1 engine over there, but when they came out with this cross or a flat plane crank, high revving V8 that revs all the way to 8,600 RPM, I'm telling you right now, it doesn't get any better than that to me. All right, well, of course, you know, I can't deny my love of a good blower. This uh, has a 2.6 liter Eaton supercharger on top of a more traditional Chevy small block V8 in the traditional V pattern. This, of course, is a single overhead cam instead of a dual overhead cam. And uh, this setup here, you can't see a lot because this thing has a massive carbon fiber supercharger cover. But when you take it off, if you look under back here, you can see you've got the plate, the man who hand assembled it in Detroit. And of course you got your supercharger cover and supercharger base right here. But of course, a lot of the engine is hidden. But again, you know, when it comes to sheer raw power, you know, they haven't been more powerful than this, at least not yet. We'll see what the new C8Z brings, but hands now, down. Speaking of the new C8Z, <laughs> The C7Z has a lot of arrow on it, but now look at what kind of arrow you get on the C8Z. With the C7Z, it had a lot less arrow compared to the C7ZR1. Right. Especially the, the rear wing. Right. Now, off the bat, I gotta highlight one thing that, you know, I may not have mentioned during our live, but you know, normally the ZTK comes with an extra canyard piece that sits here. And this is not the first ZTK that's come across the Corvette world that hadn't had that installed as I've come to find out a lot of them, for whatever reason, the dealers didn't install them and the people that bought them didn't know about it. So, but they are floating around out there in the aftermarket. It's hard to get a hold of OEM ones though, but normally you'd have that candid here. And of course you come to the C8Z, 
you just like just like the seven you got a front splitter but you know have something that you haven't had on the vet before at least factory and that's a full-blown dive plane so now you've got of course here you had a a cupping effect with your arrow you would have your you know your tandard here you know yep. creating downforce to the front well here they're doing it by a dive plane so instead of cupping it it kind of deflects it up the one plus to this is it's not catching debris and stuff. That will say that. That is a plus to this. This design. actually shoves the front end down harder than it. Uh, yes, a because it, if you look at bows out, now it does stick out pretty far, although the ZR1 does have a very big splitter. They do oh, yeah. actually, if you do put my hand here, I mean, you'll see they both jet out pretty good amount already, but this definitely jets out a little bit further here. Sure. So. The C8Z has a brand new tire. Of course, this is the pilot sport cup 2r which is obviously the latest and greatest from michelin and what we would call a cheater slick um it is still street legal but as you can see there ain't a lot of tread here in fact you got a bigger than a handful of area you have practically no tread and a couple grooves in there similar to sport cup 2 and the previous cup 1 that they used in the zero one pde but obviously the compound on this is even more improved and the numbers that it's put up or speak for itself Although I highly, just with the previous Sport Cup 2, I don't recommend driving behind this car if you're going no. down a rocky road. It will throw rocks. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Now, another thing, too, is the tire size, which we'll get to in a minute yes. here. Now, this particular ZR1, you know, it does not have the factory original Sport Cup 2, so it's not compared. This currently has a set of Continentals. Um, but while we're here covering down on the tires, you know, it, it's... They did get a little bigger. There's no doubt about that with the C8Z. These were already monsters. You had a 285 in the front and a 335 12-inch wide tire in the rear. And the C8Z, you, you know, you're bumping it up from a 1920 to a 20 and a 21. As you can see here, you know, you've got this massive 275s 275 275 in the front, which is a little bit smaller than the C8, C7Z. But you come to the rear and you got this 21-inch 345. Which, I mean, back in the day, the only cars that had 345 was the Countach. And the Viper. Well, the Viper eventually did get it. Yes, sure. correct. So, yeah, the later Viper did get the 345. But, again, that Viper that had that originally, the original Viper to get 345 couldn't make a turn compared to this. It was all until the ACR they finally did it. But, I mean, look at the size of this thing. You get down on it. I mean, holy smokes. Oh, yeah. Look at this, folks. <laughs> look at that. You're, you're over 13 inches. Yeah. From end to end. <laughs> that, is oh, yeah. a, that is a massively fat tire. Yes. You know, so. And then you couple it with the engine in the back with this launch control system. This is why, again, when we talk about the top performance categories, the one category that this car is still currently king um, is the 0 to 60. Sure. You know, your 0 to 60 time in the, uh, so, now they say 2.6. But then again, they said 2.9 with the Stingray, and we all know Mike uh, broke that on a handful of others, getting 2.6. Um, this one here, there have been people, if I'm not mistaken, I think Amelia and a few others have gotten it down into the 2.5 uh, and 4 range. Right. So, okay, so this is definitely the king of acceleration, or at least it's tied with the E-Ray right now, because so far the E-Ray numbers we see seem to match that. Sure. But the E-Ray is going to be able to do it a lot easier, more consistently, because it's all-wheel drive. However, what's interesting is the quarter mile. Now, because of the improved launch capacity, it does a lot more with less. You got 670 versus, you know, 7, you know, 70, 755 here. Quarter mile time on this, at least the best time seen, which I know Amelia did, and I've seen a few others, seems to be 10.4 is the, the yes. top number so far. Ironically, that is tied by the E-Ray. Yep. We'll be seeing as people start getting those E-Rays if they can beat it. However, um, Big Farm Co. Racing, who's got a nice red ZR1, actually currently holds the record on this one with a stock low-wing ZR1, was able to hit 10-2 in the quarter on stock tires. Now, that was the non-ZTK. Right. That was the low-wing. Low wing, but yeah. again, you got a ZTK, you could just pull the canards and yeah, the spoiler yeah. off, and you can be running. If you can do the launch right, you got a good prep track, you can run in the low 10s all day. Sure. So ZR1, as of right now, as we're recording this, is still the king or the best quarter mile time. So real quick, going back to the arrow, yeah. let's compare the two wings. Oh yes, okay, well. <laughs> well, let's, let, here, I got the ruler. So here, let's go from the tip here to here. We're looking at, I'm trying not to scratch it. Let's see here, well, about 12 inches. 
So okay. from here to here, at an, if you go at an angle, it's about 12 inches up. So okay. About a good foot. Now the Z06 made it a little easier to get in and out of uh, the inside. They kind of have this nice little bowing effect here. You know, you're only a couple inches here in the middle. You're only about, eh, not about five and a half. But if you go all the way here to the base, now you're getting, you know, about nine from here. So yeah, I mean, it's definitely higher up on the edges yeah. on the outside than it is on the middle, but. And, and comparing the way they look, obviously they're both functional. Do you remember what the, I don't remember what the downforce is on this. Do you remember? 800 and some pounds. At okay. 800 and we know. 184 miles an hour. And we know that one at full tilt is in excess of 900. Yeah. It's so. like 900 and some. Yeah. Now, neither of them eclipsed the Viper ACR's wing, which no. had over a thousand. That was one of the reasons yeah. why that thing was so dangerous on the track. But, you know, bottom line is these are definitely some pretty serious arrow. But I will note, when taking the tops off and putting them in, the Z06 is a lot easier. The ZR1, you oh, got to kind yeah. of, I highly recommend those accessory bumper bibs when you do it because you got to come in from the side and go in right. at an angle. Right. So it's definitely, that is definitely a lot easier to manage than this. But I do like that you can just detach this. Sure. You know, if you got that wrench. It's not the easiest procedure, but you can do it if you want to modify it for a straight line race. Okay, interior. So both cars have extremely well done interiors. And of course you have two different trim levels in the ZR1 and you have three different tree levels in the Z06. So it's not quite 100% even, but this, now this particular trim is a 2LZ. Um, so, but you could see even in the 2LZ, I mean, look at, you got color accenting, you got nice leather stitching all across all the surfaces. Carbon fiber. You've got carbon fiber accents. You've got, color going up and accenting the dash even in the mid trims like this yes and of course let's talk technology let's talk you know features you've got a heated steering wheel you don't have that in c7 you've got in 24 you've got the adaptive handling with the cruise control you've got the collision alert and the pedestrian alert you've got sensors in the c8 so there's definitely got a the rear view camera advantage. mirror Yes, rear view camera mirror and high definition cameras. Yes. Now they did improve the cameras in 2018 and the C7 over the earlier C7s, but they were still not high depth. Yeah. yeah. So definitely, obviously every generation advances, but the C7's interior is no slouch either. Even this one, this is a 3ZR, so this is a top level trim, but it doesn't have the accessory mats. It doesn't have like the, um, the Sebring Orange Design Package, which had, you know, right. specialized seats with the color and the embroidered mats. But okay, but neither is that. That's not a special edition either. So here's it. We're comparing a more standard 3ZR. You do get the nice carbon fiber steering wheel. You get the gloss carbon fiber interior package. Of course, NAV, PDR, all the cameras. And, you know, the uh, Apple CarPlay and all tech and whatnot. But of course, you've got this still an LCD. You, you know, you got a diamond stitch suede. It's still a very, very nice and still very current interior setup without a doubt just you know again they've done a nice job of improving there's it's no a question comfortable there. car now let's move on to how it drives on the road okay so obviously you know we won't be able to demonstrate that here but no we but you've driven both i've driven I've both driven um i will say this the uh um i've only gotten one full drive in the uh c8z like kind of in the wild and one on a test drive sure you know the uh, I will say this, like all C8s, it's deceptively comfortable on the road. Oh, yeah. It is stiffer than the Stingray, no questions asked. Now, keep in mind, I wasn't driving a Z07, but it's got what I call, it's got like a knife's edge sure. you know, feel to it. You turn and it just does everything you say you do in like a pinpoint you know, responsiveness. That is one thing I will give the C8s. You, you feel like it could do way more than it probably even could. I mean, that's the, the confidence it inspires. Yes. However... I do have some drive time behind this, and I have never been in a car at and done a turn at 80 miles an hour and felt so planted on the road. Yeah. When this thing gets up to speed, I mean, I was on I was I was on a drive and I was coming around a ramp and I literally I'm at 85 and this thing felt like I could have done 150 around this turn. It was planted. It was stationed. Now it was a it was a hot day in Texas and it was dry and I did have the Sport Cup two tires at the time with a ZTK. And it was planted. Now, I, I just, to this day, I've never felt more comfortable going around a turn in this car. I haven't done a turn like that in one of these. I'm sure the time will come. But my God, did this thing feel just sturdy. 
However, I will note, I did note when I was doing it, I could actually hear the wind hitting this thing. <laughs> you know, now I was in the thrill of the moment, but I could actually hear the wind hitting this. So you could tell, you know, again, it, it is a functional, but it's not a sound damp and as new ones would feel like you're driving in a Cadillac or so smooth. So what I was gonna say is my experience between the two is this is a super, super smooth riding uh, C7. I had a C7 Z06 with the Z07 package. And when I drove the C7 ZR1, it was like night and day different in smoothness. And I'm not just talking about the suspension. I'm talking about the application of the gas pedal, the application of the brake, turning, everything about the car felt smoother. Even the acceleration felt smoother. The thing that I love about the Z06 as well though, that's night and day different from the ZR1, is it's actually not that smooth. It's actually, uh, I forget who it was that told me, I think it was Speed Phenom told me when he first got in his Z06 that it felt like it just wanted to lunge forward. And that's exactly the way that car feels to me. It feels like it just is saying, go, push me, push the, the gas pedal down. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And because it's a high revving flat plane crank V8, not only is it just, you know, shoving you to go, but also it's a visceral feeling in my opinion. Yeah. It's a sound and a feeling that's totally different than that ZR1. Even though the ZR1 is super loud, it's a totally different experience. So those are the two separate experiences I think that you can say between the ZR1 and the Z06. Yeah, and again, I haven't had enough drive time and I have no drive time in the Z07. You know, parking right. a car right. doesn't count. Um, so, you know, I can't vouch for that part of it. I've only driven standard suspension Z06s. Sure. You know, so those are obviously gonna ride a little different than this. Now, I, one last thing we should address and then we'll be done. And that is kind of how they're holding their values. I know this is a brand new thing. However, it's still doing pretty darn good on the secondary market. Yeah. And this, we already know, is doing excellent. However, it did drop a little bit in the last eight months. It did drop. Well, let's face it. You know, the whole market went up in light of everything. You know, again, we talked about the perfect storm. First, you had the strike. Then you had COVID. Then you had um, a tornado strike the plant. We right. had heart shortages, more COVID, and it's just and another strike. So, I mean, it, it, oh, you know, so we're definitely going to be looking back at this when we're starting to get even more bald and more gray, Mike, that, you know, this was definitely an era of, really unusual times but sure. one thing that is certain is you know we talked about this way back when this things first hit and we had them on the floor here in corvette world that they're probably going to gain value yes and they did even despite the come down you know as the market has settled and realized itself after the COVID inflation um there's only 2500 and change of these things floating around yep. out there okay yep. and you know again and as mentioned it's still the best overall performing Corvette to date. Now that title's probably going to be dethroned here within the next year, but again, it's the best performing front engine Corvette. Sure. sure. And maybe if they never go back to front engine again, this will be. This would be the pinnacle of its body style for its this Corvette's line. So it will more than likely continue to maintain that value. It'll just come down to obviously what model, what color. Uh, how many miles, that kind of thing. I'm sure you're going to have a few museum pieces with neighbor mark style level miles on it. Sure, and they're sure. going to maintain really strong value. Now, as time goes on, you know, the prices on these will eventually probably come down. But I don't think they're, it's going to be a long time before they get down to C7 levels. Right. Right. They're, ju they're just, I mean, at least not yet. They're it's having, next level. They, well, it's a different level, but also the initial price points are so much higher. Right. When this thing came out, it took the title as the most expensive production Corvette in history, with the pinnacle being 155000 Sure. The pinnacle. Now, again, inflation's part of this, but again, this car sitting in front of us is a 2LZ, so it's not even a fully loaded trim, and it has a sticker of 154.5. Right. So this is already pretty much with a mid level trim tied with the top of right, this right so the and you look back the c7 z06 highest price point was 121 and that was a carbon 65 convertible with a z07 yep so again it's a different price point so again prices will adjust down as as production catches up but i don't think they're going to get down into the levels we're seeing these bargain c7s where you get them in the 60s right at least not for a long time where they got to have a bunch of mileage or stuff on them because 
it's just going to, there's not even enough of them out there yet to push the prices down. Correct. That's one of the biggest issues. There's not enough yet. Right. And even then, if they don't, if they don't step up production and this, uh, you know, backlog continues for the next few years, they may never get to those price points. Right. So. All so right. I will hold another thing. All right. Now people will question and say, well, this one did this, this, this. Okay. First off, let's question track performance with these two cars. VIR, we don't have an Nuremberg time. For whatever reason, GM decided not to give us that, but we do have VIR times. This one here at the lightning lap did 238 and is in the top five times. However, Jim Merrow's record, 237.2. That's tied with the 911 GT3 and just a hair above the Mercedes Black Series. That, it's actually no, tied that with title. the GT2 RS. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so that's what I mean. I'm sorry, you're right, GT2. So again, so... But, it, but look at that. They've been able to close that gap to a second yeah. with seven, a lot less horsepower. With less horsepower. Yeah. So, again, this is why that hype for this car's successor, the C8Z, is going to be incredible. You know, what will they do next? When you look at what they've already done, with, they've done more with less. Yes. This one still has a slight edge in most categories, but it's so close. That you know again, when we we'll see the haymaker here within the next year. I'm excited. I hope you are. But one thing I will say about this, we have to talk, Mike, before we close this video out. How about the noise? Oh, let's talk noise. Yeah. So I'll I'll put that in right now, so you guys can hear the we cold start. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> We're just kidding. All right, here's the real sounds. So ladies and gentlemen, that is going to wrap this video up. I hope you enjoyed the comparison between these two absolute monsters here at Corvette World. If you enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up. And let us know which one is your favorite. Yeah, let us know which one your favorite is. The Z06 or the 250 mile hour ZR1. So obviously, you know, I'm a little biased. Leave it down in the comments below. You guys have a wonderful rest of your evening and we'll see you guys out on the road. <laughs>